Hi everybody, Lori here for Simon Says Stamp. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've got a colorful kite themed project to share with you. I'm going to be featuring the Kite Builder Stencil. This is a new stencil, just came out in the Let's Chill release with Simon Says Stamp. It's just one single stencil, but it allows you to build beautiful kites. Okay, so I'm going to adhere this temporarily with some purple masking tape on a panel of white cardstock. I'm using hammer mill, but any white cardstock will do. I'm going to make these kites two-toned. So I'm using a combination of cheeky and peachy, which is kind of a corally red and an orange, a light orange color. These are the positively saturated inks. They blend like butter. And I'm also using the Simon Says Stamp blender brushes, which also blend like butter. Okay, so I'm starting very light starting very slowly. I'm going to build up the intensity. I want it to be slightly gradient, so a little bit darker on the bottom of that kite, fade it up a little lighter. Now once I build up that intensity, slightly two-toned, I'm going to kick it up another notch. I'm going to zhuzh it up with the Slimline Sun Rays stencil. I went rifling through all my stencils and I found this one and I thought, how cool would that be if I laid it over top of the kite builder stencil and kind of incorporated a pattern so you've got a two-tone pattern kite just shushing it up you know living on the edge and this is a great way to get a little more mileage out of all those stencils that you probably have kind of using it in a bit of an untraditional way but it's kind of cool it like kind of opens your mind all different patterns that you could add to your kites so there you have a slimline stencil used to add a pattern on a kite and it's two-toned to boot really loving the result that looks gorgeous and i i loved it so much i thought i gotta do a couple more because i gotta try a couple more color combinations a couple more patterns just just experiment okay so this time i'm using seafoam and celery a light aqua and a very lime green the two together is like peanut butter and jelly match made in heaven and again starting light building up that gradient intensity um, a little bit darker on the bottom of the kite faded up just gives it that beautiful kind of blowing in the wind dimension i think go with it okay this time i'm using the slimline organic dot stencil so who would have thought that you could use your slimline stencils on a project like this i certainly didn't i just went rifling through and i thought oh i like this pattern could be cool on a kite and that's as far as that went. Okay, so again, two-tone. I'm using the sea foam again, but I felt like I wasn't getting enough contrast. So I pulled out the next shade darker, which is surf. You know how the positively saturated inks come in like groupings of three? So sea foam's the lightest, surf is slightly darker. And then again, I used that celery again. It gave me enough uh, contrast just to stick with that. I didn't have to go a shade darker. So peel that off, reveal the pattern, loving where it's going i wanted to do one more but i ran out of room on that panel so i i got another white panel of white cardstock taping this down with some purple masking tape and this time i'm doing a combination of lilac and cadet now lilac is a new color uh, there was 15 new ink colors that just came out in the let's chill release and there were several new purple shades so i had to try a purple and lilac pairs beautifully with cadet again um, getting trying to get like a seamless gradient transition on that kite before i bring in a pattern you certainly don't have to add pattern because they are great just like a smooth seamless blended kite this particular stencil is called slimline christmas star oh yeah we're pulling out the christmas stencils for this i thought the star pattern could be kind of cool on a stencil so yeah don't forget those christmas stencils and um there you have a little lilac little cadet little christmas star pattern on a kite and i'm gonna stop at three i think it's good enough i'm gonna run out of room if i do any more okay so i was wishing i had a coordinating die for these but there isn't so you gotta kick it old school and trim it out with the scissors the old fussy cut and it's actually a very very simple shape to cut out thankfully Okay, so I didn't show all of this, but you get the idea trimming out the kites. Um, it would have been cool, too, to blend them and overlap them because you could get that translucency. And that would be cool, too, if you blend them right onto a panel. 
But now what I'm going to do is add some, what do you call this, the kite strings. And I'm using flannel ink and one of the mini blender brushes. I don't even have to do any masking. I love that when you use the mini blender brushes, they just get in the little nooks and crannies and you don't get ink where you don't want it to go. Okay, so I'm kind of getting the lay of the land where I want to situate all these kites. And um, so that I can figure out where I want to put the kite strings. Have you guys ever flown a kite? Are you kite lovers? I do like to fly kites. I've only done it a couple times. We have a big yard, but we've got big oak trees. And so throughout the years, the kids have tried to fly a kite. And you can guess it. They get stuck in the tree every single time. You can only imagine the disappointment and the big old crocodile tears when you buy a beautiful, colorful kite. And it gets stuck way up high in an oak tree where no one can reach it. Needless to say, our kite flying days are far and few between. Okay, so I'm adding a third kite string again with that flannel, that mini little blender brush. The flannel is a nice subtle string. It's not too, you know, in your face. It doesn't like compete. So I trimmed this panel to three and a half inches wide by four and three fourths tall, popped it up on a cream card base, popping up the kites because dimension is life. I did double up the foam tape on the purple kite just to give it more air. Okay, the reverse chill sentiment strips. We got sending sunshine and let's fly away. That would pair perfectly with the kites. But I decided to go with sending sunshine. Do you ever really have a hard time deciding on a sentiment? And sometimes you just need to not overthink it. You know what I mean? So I use one of the sentiment label dies to trim that out. And I'm going to pop it up and nestle it right into that purpley blue kite and then after the fact i decided hey look at those cute little tassels and bow ties that you can add to the kite strings and you know this is probably not a great idea to add this while it's already popped up on a card base but sometimes you got to do what you got to do so i pulled out the sea foam and the surf ink and i added a subtle little kite tassel there and it really does give it some movement and I, and I loved it so much that I thought, why not add a couple of these? I don't know what they're called, but they look like little bow ties. And I did this one two-toned with the cheeky and the peachy. Just using the mini blender brushes to get in there. Trying to be careful. And uh, I love that little bit of added color down at the bottom. I finished it off with a few little raindrops for embellishment. And this card is finished. What do you think? I hope this inspires you maybe to get out your stencils. And even your Christmas stencils. Do a little stenciling on stenciling, pattern on pattern. Bada boom, bada bing. I'm sending you sunshine today. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time.